Rosa Luxemburg. She's someone who is admired by a lot of people on the far left, including people who don't like each other. Both communists and anarchists defend her legacy. Rosa Luxemburg said that freedom only for the supporters of the government, only for the members of one party, however numerous they may be, is no freedom at all. Freedom is always and exclusively freedom for the one who thinks differently. She said this in criticism of the Bolsheviks in Russia. This sounds really good. She sounds like a true friend of freedom here. Her defenders, who are more on the libertarian or anarchist side of leftist thought, will tell you that she wanted a peaceful democratic revolution to end capitalism. If you hear someone say it wasn't real communism, chances are they'll be a big fan of Rosa Luxemburg. See, if only the revolution had succeeded in Germany under Rosa Luxemburg, then we'd have real communism. It would be free and democratic. Dissent would be tolerated, and there would be no gulags. Everyone would be happy. Rosa's revolution failed because she was killed by Bernie Sanders? Now, you might be asking how that's even possible, as Bernie Sanders wasn't even born yet when Luxembourg died. See, Bernie Sanders' version of socialism is social democracy, which is different from Marxist socialism. In 1919, Germany was ruled by social democrats. And those social democrats hated Rosa Luxemburg and sent a fascist death squad to kill her. This betrayal proves that social democrats are really social fascists and only the extreme left will fight fascism. There might be a bit more to this story than they're letting on though. And we'll get to that later. If you look up Rosa Luxemburg on the internet, you'll see that many people consider her to be a hero. She's praised not only by far-left publications, but also by more mainstream media outlets. Al Jazeera calls her a hero of post-colonial theory. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't exactly associate Gulf state monarchies with left-wing politics, yet Al Jazeera is funded by the Qatari government. Hmm. We've also got the BBC, which released an article a few years ago where Rosa Luxemburg is portrayed positively. Look, she was so peaceful that she wouldn't even harm insects. Most of what you'll find about her online either takes a positive or neutral approach, though I did find one article in German that portrays her negatively. Rosa Luxemburg's modern-day supporters make her sound like she was a defender of freedom of speech, of freedom for people to think differently. They say that she was against a violent revolution, they point to her quotes as evidence of this. But actions speak louder than words, so let's examine her life and actions. Rosa Luxemburg was born in 1871 in Poland, the part of Poland that was then controlled by Russia. She got involved in Marxist politics. She entered into the equivalent of a green card marriage to get German citizenship. Fast forward to World War I and the socialist movements across Europe are faced with a choice. Do they support their nation's war efforts or do they put class over nationality and oppose the war? It may surprise you that most socialist parties chose the former, including in Germany. 
Rosa Luxemburg, Carl Liebknecht, and Clara Zetkin founded the Spartacist League, an organization of socialists who were against the war. These radical leftists viewed the other socialists as sellouts, and the seeds of conflict between the two factions were already planted. Many Spartacists, as they were called, spent time in prison, including Luxembourg herself. By late 1918, the war was going very poorly for Germany, and it was increasingly obvious that a central power's victory was impossible. Protests in Germany forced the Kaiser to abdicate on November 9th, and Germany was now ruled by socialists. The moderate Social Democrats, who had supported the war back in 1914, their leader was Friedrich Ebert. Elections were set to be held in January 1919. So if Rosa Luxemburg and the Spartacists were pro-democracy, shouldn't they be happy that a democratic socialist government had come to power? Well, they weren't happy, and they sought to undermine this new democracy. As Eric Waldman writes in The Spartacist Uprising, they also declared that a dictatorship of a minority had become unavoidable because the masses continued to follow the bureaucrats and traitors of the working class. They didn't want a peaceful democratic transition. They wanted a violent revolution to destroy capitalism. They were not interested in sharing power. The Spartacists, including Rosa Luxemburg, had a different definition of democracy than most people. They wanted Germany to be ruled by workers and soldiers' councils where class enemies wouldn't be allowed to participate. The Spartacists established their own newspaper called Die Rote Fahne, or The Red Flag, and Rosa Luxemburg wrote articles for it. Let's see what she wrote. She called for the abolition of all parliaments. She also called for formation of a proletarian Red Guard for the permanent protection of the revolution and conscription of a workers' militia to prepare the entire proletariat to be on the alert at all times. She also said the civil war, which they, referring to the moderate socialists, seek to banish from the revolution with uneasy anxiety, cannot be banished. Civil war is only another name for the class struggle, and the idea that socialism can be introduced without a class struggle and through parliamentary majority decisions is a ridiculous petite bourgeois illusion. She's starting to sound a lot like the Bolsheviks. While earlier she had criticized the Bolsheviks for the lack of freedom and democracy in Russia during the revolution, what she really wanted was a democracy where different types of Marxist communists could participate, not any sort of meaningful democracy. Today, people on the far left will often claim that there is no democracy in America, or in Taiwan, or in South Korea, etc. What they mean by this is that democracy is when they get what they want, when they don't get what they want, it's not a democracy. Germany was becoming a real democratic country, and instead of supporting Germany's democracy and trying to win the upcoming elections, the communists would try to seize power for themselves. Now, Rosa Luxemburg originally was against a violent revolution. In contrast to the more impetuous Karl Liebknecht, 
This wasn't because of any principled opposition to violence, however. It was because she didn't think that the communists had enough public support yet. She wanted to postpone the revolution for when there was more public support for violently overthrowing the government and their chances for success were a lot higher. And in January 1919, the radical left clearly didn't have the public support necessary to successfully overthrow the government. Despite her reservations, when other communists decided they would overthrow the government on January 5th, 1919, she decided that she had to join in. And it's really telling that one of the first actions of the revolutionaries was seizing the office of a newspaper in Berlin belonging to the moderate socialists. Far-left revolutionaries did the same thing in other cities too. And this was all in the same month that elections were supposed to be held. Instead of competing in democratic elections, the communists, calling themselves Spartacists, decided they would use bullets instead of ballots to win power. Here's part of a proclamation from Friedrich Ebert's government. Fellow citizens, Spartacus is now fighting for complete power. The government, which within 10 days wants to permit the people to decide freely about their own fate, is to be overthrown by force. The people are not permitted to speak. Their voices are to be suppressed. You have seen the result. Where Spartacus rules, all personal freedom and security is suspended. The newspapers are suppressed. Traffic is paralyzed. Sections of Berlin are scenes of bloody fighting. Others are already without water and light. Food depots are stormed. The food supply for the soldiers and civilian population is interrupted. You've probably heard the saying, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Well, trying to overthrow the government is typically a very stupid game to play. Among those who were about to win a stupid prize were Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht, who would be murdered by the Freikorps, German paramilitary forces. Some Freikorps members would end up becoming Nazis, so the narrative is that social democrats are fascists because they ordered the Freikorps to help them defeat the revolution. Now let's be clear, even though I think that Luxembourg and Liebknecht are wrong, they shouldn't have been killed like that. The Freikorps should have handed them over to the government, and they should have stood trial. Maybe they would have been executed, maybe not. After all, Hitler was only given a light prison sentence for trying to overthrow the government a few years later. <laughs> 